Good morning, everybody, and welcome to this session that we'll handle and talk about 3D visualization of our world. Uh, the first speaker that's going to present you uh, 3D tools in GVSIG using NASA Worldwind uh, is Mr. Cesar Martinez. He's a developer of the GVSIG community and uh, is here on behalf of Scolab and which is uh, a company that is part of the GVSIG association itself. So, please. Hello. Uh, well, so we are going to present the integration of uh, NASA World Win in, in GVSIG, uh, in the last version of GVSIG. Um, well, I will first uh, explain a bit uh, of and the goals of the integration and why it's important to have 3D in, in GIS and then some history of 3D in GBC because we already had some, some tries and then I will introduce what we are able to do till now and what uh, we are working on and and then yeah, well, how to get it and, and what's the new features on, on GVC.3, which is the last version. So yeah, plainly the goals of, of the integration were to have this uh, stable and, and great uh, whirlwind... Uh, ah, sorry. <laughs> sorry. Um, yeah, so the main goal was to integrate in whirlwind in GVC. Uh, Maybe you don't know UV6, some of you, I don't know. It's a desktop uh, GIS application. It's based on Java and it has a long story uh, already, like 10 years or a bit more. And yeah, I, I guess also you know Whirlwind, and which I'm not sure if it was the first globe uh, or at least the, the first open source globe around, I think. A lot of years ago, and the first version was was based on, not on Java, but on .NET. But then they rewrote it to make it available in several platforms. A lot of years ago already. And yeah, w why do we need three engines? Well, because height matters, <laughs> and we are ignoring it most of the time. But for some things, uh, it matters. For instance, for dynamic processes. Uh, like floods or, or flight simulations or uh, also for visualizing mm, infrastructure planning that's very useful uh, it can be used also for tourism for tourism to 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 show interesting things of cities for instance and there is also some problem that can only be solved using 3d algorithms um, and finally yeah because it, people like it no I think. <laughs> and regarding some history, uh, now we are on 2.2 version of GBC, but in the 1.x uh, uh, branch, we already have a, uh, a plugin, a 3D plugin, a, pi a pilot. Uh, it was very powerful, but it's lot, it was a lot of years ago, so um, technology was not so ready to make it work in, on Java. And there were a lot of uh, native code mixed with Java that we have to maintain ourselves and it was very big effort. So finally we never ported it to, to the new branch, which was quite new code base, the, the, dot, uh, the, the 2.x branch. So um, for the for for this branch, we have cho chosen to integrate uh, an existing Java library such as NASA, NASA Worldwind, which is much easier for us to to maintain in in GBC. It's uh, it has already a community behind, and it is very and they are actively supporting it. And now I'm going to explain what we can do for the moment in GBC with 3D. I, I will. Uh, explain maybe one feature and then show a video because I think it's more interesting to see videos. Um, so the, the way we have designed it is that you create a normal view in GVC, you load whatever layers you want and symbolize them and then you can create a 3D view from this. Uh, so it will create a, a new view with the same layers but in, in 3D. And 
there is automatic row projection, meaning that if you have a, a 2D view in whatever projection, well, the 3D view, the 3D view will always be in, uh, in WGS 84. So it's EP, EP 4326. And, uh, the engine will automatically project the layers so that are correctly displayed on, on the 3D mode. And, well, because we had, uh, the, the first version of the, of this plugin was, Available for GBC 2.2 .2 version, which is the stable now. And we did, we like this automatic reproduction, but for 2.3, it's already done. Then you have some optional view, viewport and layer synchronization. So when you create the, the 3D view, it can be, uh, it can, always keep out, uh, updating the, the the viewport when you zoom in one place it will zoom also on the 2d view or you can uh, not do it or or you can do it only when you want to do it by default it's not uh, synchronized and you, you you have to activate it and then we have uh, a an spheric and a flat models and um, uh, we recently introduced uh, some anaglyph mode to, to see with the, these glasses for for 3D uh, and anaglyph uh, visualization. And well, I think I'm going to show some video already. So here we, we have a, we ha oh, it's only showing here, sorry. Uh, probably I need to, to send it there to the other. Yeah, it was coming. It was coming? Yeah, I seen it for a Maybe I need to uh, make the other, the presentation had to. Was it? <laughs> well, uh, okay. And with the mouse now. <laughs> Sorry, I lost the mouse. Uh, <laughs> okay, okay. Let's see. Okay, so we have a normal 2D view here uh, with uh, some row uh, layers. Mm, and then we are going to go to these uh, 3D uh, buttons. The one on the, the one on the, on the, le on the left is the, the 3D view and this is the spheric view. And yeah, it has created already the the 3D view with the layer we had. And then uh, I click on, on synchronize the viewport. So it's going to uh, to Tenerife, where the view was, the 2D view was there. And you can play a bit with the exaggeration of the terrain. This is a volcano. You can clearly see in Canary Island in Spain. And um, this is the, the vector vectorial vector layer, and we have three different ways to load vectors in the three D view. Uh, the one showing here in the video is that the vector is rasterized, and then it's, uh, it's drawn on using the, the um, uh, elevation model because the plugin has a. Uh, in, and into has already an elevation model uh, and also you have seen it here when you open the globe it all also has like a satellite image which is very convenient you can add your own cartography but by default you already have some cartography there then um, so we were 
here. So the nice thing is that you can load any of the data sources of GBC on the 3D view. So you can load any raster. You can load uh, vectors uh, as yeah, I was explaining this um, rasterized rasterized um, way to load vectors, but we have two other ways. We you can just load it as a 3D um, um, feature, a 3D geometry, if you have the 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 set in in the data, such as lidar data, for instance, that I will I will show an example later, or you can also. Uh, to have a, a, two, a 2D layer and an extrude it. Um, and then, uh, well, maybe I saw some videos of this also. Um, you have five minutes left, right? Okay. <laughs> ah, so the video is playing already. So this is a raster and uh, yeah, it's scoring line cover. And yeah, you, you can see, well, nothing special. It's it's also you see it's the the internal elevation model is being used to to draw it, and then I'm going to show the extrusion uh, the vector extrusion. So you have a two D layer here, and uh, you go to to the options. And then you choose the, this uh, extrude version, extrude mode to load the, the layer, and you can choose the, the the height. You can set a fixed height or a constant height or a mixture of, of both of them which will be some and the exaggeration. And then yeah, when you open the the 3D view, and you will see the result. Uh, I think this is very convenient when you have. Uh, buildings uh, on a 2D uh, layer, so you don't have um, actually the, the, the real 3D buildings, but if you have the height, it has a very, it creates a very nice effect. And then you can also do similar thing for points, and which creates some interesting markers. And then. Okay, then you can also load your own uh, elevation model, and well, maybe we are running out of time. Um, so I will show. A, I will show a video about. Um, sorry, I don't know how is this. Uh, okay, I will show one last video about loading a LiDAR, LiDAR data, if I'm able to. Okay, it's here on my window. Sorry. Sorry, because this is becoming a bit complicated with these different windows. So this is uh, this is a village on the Basque country in Spain. Uh, here I have a layer with a, a, a WMS service uh, from the uh, Spanish government with a um, aerial imaginary. That's very nice if you use uh, online services and you can also see them in in the in the model, in the 3D view. And then uh, I have uh, one LiDAR uh, file. I have symbolized it in two different ways. Um, well, only seeing the the, the, or the aerial imaginary, it's very nice. Uh, if you have that detail uh, image, it creates very interesting, interesting effects. And well, in, then I have this LiDAR, I have symbolized it in different ways. This is the height, 
So it's the, the recorded height in the, in the lighter points, and I have symbolized it from white, which is low elevation, like about 100 meters, and red, which is about 500 meters, and is the highest uh, height in the area. And you can see there also how it matches the, um, the internal uh, elevation model quite nicely. Sometimes, I, there is some discrepancies when you load um, from different uh, models. And this is um, land cover classification from the LiDAR points also. You can see, I don't know, the red thing is buildings and green, green thing is base station, base station like load, uh, low vegetation, high vegetation, and brown thing is the terrain. And you can see really how, how it matches where the houses are with the LiDAR classification and where even where the higher, uh, the darker green, which means uh, higher um, vegetation, you can see really like higher trees here. And finally, okay. We are also working on animations because now um, yeah, you have to move it manually, but uh, we are working on making it like defining some points uh, and, and orientations and then, then getting uh, like automatic fly. fly. And then also auto, um, alphanumeric annotations. Um, temporal data management of uh, NetCDF object, which is not really 3D thing, but can be useful for, for 3D. With, combined with animation, especially. Then we are also working on, on uh, loading 3D objects. Um, and then some tools for topographic profiles. And then, well, uh, it's important to know where you can get this 3D plugin. Uh, for the 2.2 version, you have to install it separately, but for the 2.3 version, it is integrated. 2.3 version is not uh, still uh, released, the final version, but there is already like a preview version online, a development version that you can try, and it has already the 3D tools. Maybe not all the modes that, uh, for the vector still, but yes, uh, most of the things is already there and we hope that around September we will release the final version and some other nice things you can find in the two or three version is um, that you can create plugins with Python and you can access to, to everything from there so um, if you you are more familiar to Python than Java you can create very nice um, pl plugins there and then we we have improved the GDAL and uh, OER integration. We have a, a plugin to, to read vector data using OER, which opens GBC to m more formats, more firm vector formats. And we have also uh, changed the, our prediction library to use um, GDAL because in, before we were using uh, Proi, Pro, so now it's also used under the hood. Uh, but uh, because the analysis is using also Pro, but we have a higher uh, level in interface to to it. And uh, let me mention also that uh, we have a, an, uh, a solution for creating a new portal, which is called GBC Online. It's quite a new product, and uh, it's more anecdotal, than, but more, rather anecdotal. But we have some experimental 3D super on it, also using. WebGL, and that's it. You have any questions? Okay, thank you. Thank you. We have <laughs> we have time for a couple of short questions. So, any questions out there? Hi. Uh, just question on the cloud uh, work that you uh, tend to do. What's the, um, have you been playing around with that already? And how does that uh, um, look? How's the performance and the memory usage and so forth? 
In the, in the web thing, you mean? Or, or sorry? Uh, the Colada um, data for actually in the world wind. Uh, we, we are uh, still working on it. Um, it's uh, like on the queue, but uh, I, I don't have uh, any... Yeah, we'll with it or... But I, I can ask, because I'm not myself doing the, the integration. I can I ask my colleagues, if you're interested, I can send you there. Or I, or I can maybe give you their emails and they will give you like first-hand information. Okay. Any other question? All right. So thank you very much. Thank you. Um.